Yo, what up? This your boy Fit the Sound. Welcome back to another take of tap to tap to tap. Tap in. Uh, today uh, we're gonna speak on Proverbs eighteen verse twenty one. Oh. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Um, how powerful is that verse? And when you hear that verse, like, how does it speak to you? Um, it's. It's a really the verse. No. I did. Basically. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's, that's, that was it? Oh, pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's the verse. That's the whole verse. Um, but it is a really powerful verse. And especially now, like in now a days, like you really see how important it is to watch what you say. You know, like people like will talk like really like recklessly, like just jokingly, and like they will actually get into really bad situations because of what they verbalized and what they put out there. So it's really important to, you know, watch what you say. And like, the more you say something, that's, that's what you're going to do. You know, like you're going to form those habits. You're going to form those thoughts, like, you know, so it's really important to watch what you say, make sure that you keep all bad thoughts away and really just, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, also just to piggyback on what she said. Um, I believe once you start, speaking something over your life is planted in your head and you get to believe in it. Like, for example, if I'm speaking on my life, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm going to start to believe I'm really a failure because that's what I'm speaking on my life. Yeah. I think another verse that can tie it into this is like, you know, like like you said, like declaring life over you. Right. And I think about the verse that says, you know, to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Uh, it goes hand in hand with this verse because I realize like when we are angry, we're just trying to get back. Yeah. Right. So anything comes out of our mouth, True. Yeah. you know, and we don't filter what we say because we are speaking out of anger. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes we say things. Right. We speak death to other people's lives. Right. Because of our anger. Um, so it, it is a powerful thing, the tongue. And when we use it for good, uh, it goes a long way. But when we decide to use it for bad, it could destroy lives as well. Um, I think so. I think for me, it has to do with our culture. Because I feel like a lot of Haitian parents, especially when they're mad at their children, they always have some things to say. So I always feel like they're always cursing their children because they always said, oh, you're not going to be nothing in life. Oh, oh, I see the way you're doing things because you don't listen to me. It's you bad, you this. And I always feel like I think I had a bad experience because I always like I always witnessed how some people were with their kids and then they're not living anymore. So I always feel like if somebody has something to say, you better say something nice to me. And I'm grateful for my mom because she always has something nice. She always, you know, giving me blessings. And whenever she want to say something bad, I always rebuke it just to make sure I get that devil out. So I'm going to say like it's in our culture, we don't really think. I don't we just, you know, bring out words and just say things to make us feel better and not thinking of the other party. Yeah. And um, sometimes it's just out of like being funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we say things, not thinking, you know, how hurtful it can be to the person that's receiving it. Mm -hmm. You know, and um at James 1 verse 26. Um it says, if anyone among you think he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but receive his own heart, this one religion is useless. Like we need to learn how to muzzle our tongue you know in a sense um because at times like because you hurt me and i want to hurt you so bad that i'm trying to get the best comeback possible and i don't care how it might affect you you know i think it's something that we do a lot and you know consciously we don't realize how um this destructive you know our tongue can be towards you know, rebuking somebody else. That's true. Absolutely. You know, as you guys were saying this, it's funny because I feel, because I was thinking, I was saying, like, there are certain things we might say might be the foundation of somebody's life. And I just have a quick thing because when I was little, 
I don't remember this person, but this person surely remember. So I don't know what I said to her. And I, I promise you this person, she's married now and she still remembered what I said. Mm-hmm. It was good bad. It was, for her, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad because all I said was, it was just an event and I told her if she's going to go change whatever she was wearing. But for her, she thought I said something bad to her, like as in, you know, I wanted to bully her or anything. But she still hold to that till today. And she's married. She has her whole family. Of course, I send my story to her already because I don't think I met it that way in a way. But then I realized, you know, you can just say one word and that person keep it forever. Or they could just be too sensitive. I mean, is that a thing though? What do, what do you what do you mean by too sensitive? You can't take a joke. Why you want to joke? I don't see any joke I mean, in the Bible. Like yeah, but blessed. there's there's mm-hmm. some things like you can joke about it and like I can say. Um, you know, I can make fun of the way your eyebrows are shaped, you know, and I'm thinking that's just a joke and it's all in good fun, but like that could be an insecurity for the other person. So without knowing, you know, you're trying to target them and now they're feeling all, all this and that, you know? But my thing is why, why making jokes when you can bless? Cause I, I was reading mm. Paul, right? There's one thing I saw, like every letters that Paul sent, it was always ending with a blessing. And I'm like, why does my friend don't speak to me like that? <laughs> so why don't you, when you say good night to me, why don't you just bless me? Because it was a lot of blessings. So why are we so focused on jokes? Oh, yes, your eyebrows is this. You look like this. You look like that. No, bless me. Give me blessings. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be blessed. Your family gonna be blessed. This is gonna happen, but we don't use that. And it's powerful to do it. Okay. You can bless it somebody. Is. Seafood's been in deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so just I can't it. wait to hear what thinking. what don't have to say. Right. Because man, because the Bible says out of the same mouth ordain praise. Out of the same like it took me a while to understand that verse, man. Out of the same mouth ordain praise. The same mouth that we curse with, the same mouth that we rebuke people, the same mouth that we uh um belittle people. We praise God, God praise. right? That's something yeah. that does not go hand in hand, Yeah. right? Um, and I have to realize, man, like you are not just destroying somebody else, but you're destroying yourself because how can you offer a living sacrifice when you are uh, uh, literally targeting somebody and destroying their emotions, uh, you, you like their lives, period. Yeah. Because some people like, one one is weaker than the other. Mm-hmm. You never know what somebody might be going through and yeah. what words of encouragement might get them out of it and what words words of of um uh rebuke might get them out of life. That's true. Yeah. You know, and out of the same mouth ordained praise. So I'm wondering as Christians we have the word of God and the word of God is pure, it's true. Why don't we realize when we are hurting other people sooner than later? Um, for me to kind of like change a little bit on the whole um, speaking and like this power in the tongue. I think as far as life and death, that can go as far as not just like encouraging or maybe discouraging somebody. It could go as far as just manipulation. Mm-hmm. I feel like your words can manipulate people to do things that shouldn't be done or that, that that isn't good to be done or whatever like that. So it's like, I mean, you know, I guess this is recently what I've been going through. You know, shout out to like, you know, to the churches out there or ministries, other ministries out there who try to recruit people, whatever like that. I mean... I feel like people could choose to speak death over people by still calling out the name of God. I feel like it's still possible for somebody to manipulate people to do things and still use the word God into it. You know, I feel like when it comes to words, it it goes deeper than what we think it does. Like if we're going to take what the Bible says literal, like life and death, then that means like outside of just what I'm saying can kill you or can bring life to you. It can also make you do whatever I want you to. So that's why, you know, I say shout out, you know, to like 
you know, churches and ministries that that use their words to manipulate people to do things. You, you, know? you said you shouted them out? <laughs> yeah, I shout them out. Okay. Because I'm targeting them. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Shout hey, them out. My dog said he's coming for you. Yeah, that's I'm shouting them out. Don't man. play with them. Y'all yeah, just targeting those type of people that, that, you know, that use their words or even use scripture to manipulate people. Like, it, it's funny how... You know, I, I think I was talking about this recently. You know, I was I was on phone with Yvonne the other day, right? Mm. And I was just venting. I was just going crazy. And it's like, I find it hilarious how sometimes, you know, the world the world is more of a Christian than we are as Christians. You know, I find it funny how the world the world is. It is easier for the world to speak life. It's easier for the world to to encourage people than it is for the church to do it. You mean they show more characteristics of Christ? Yes, they show more characteristics of Christ. Of Christ than the church. Does. Yeah, like it, you see, you see traits of the Bible of what we should be behaving like more on the world than we do see it in, in the, the people church. who's preaching about it. So when I when I think about you know words. I think about people who speak, you know, preachers, you know, I think about people who sing, you know, like worship leaders and stuff like that. And it's like, when you're up on that stage, it's like, do you realize like how significant the words you say or what you're singing about is, you know, do you, do you understand that before you even go on the stage, you know, how how easy it is to get angry, cuss somebody out, and next you know it, in about a few seconds you about to go on stage and go see, you know? Like I think of I think of, you know, words as more than just, you know, encouragement or discouragement. I think of more so just getting people to do whatever you want. You know, I think mm. of manipulation. I think of being led astray. You know, I think of people um speaking to direct them to a certain path um that they shouldn't even be in, you know. I think of selfish gain is more. It's more than just. Uh, I'm just these, these words I speak to you discourages you or encourages you or brings you. Like I think of. I like to think of it differently. You know, my words can make you do what I want. My words can make you literally look at life differently. You know, I believe words can also make you look at God differently. You know, it can make you look at Christianity different. It can make you look at your faith and be like, maybe God ain't real. You know, so I, I think of it like that. I feel like it's just more than just encouraging and discouraging. Sometimes it's, I think the society nowadays is just a bunch of like, to be very blunt, so like the society is more sensitive and more weak. So sometimes it's easier to, to manipulate them. It's easier to to manipulate people when there's when there's no guard, when there's no hard skin. You do, know? do you think like some of that is due to us not really digging in our scripture and knowing the word of God and tr and entrusting you know our knowledge of the Bible through somebody else? I mean, I feel like it's a little bit more. It's more than just reading your word or trusting God. It's more so putting God in his rightful place, you know, because it's easy to read the word and read the life of Job, you know, read the life of the disciples and stuff like that. I think they had it hard and be like, damn, my life hard too. So, you know, but in the end it's going to work out like, like that's one part. That's one way. But also you can look at the word and be like, um, all these things, God was able to show how he's the God of literally anything. And once we put that into perspective and once we actually realize, like, and put God in his rightful throne, yo, like, I could care less what somebody told you. I'm the God over that word. So whatever he told you, bump that. It is what it is, you know, because I'm God over that, you know? Yeah. So it, it, I, I think it's more so than just reading your word. It's more so just putting him in his rightful place. Because I feel like nowadays we try God. God is bigger than what we think he is, you know? I, I don't think it's us trying God. We're trying ourselves. Because we can't, <laughs> we can't try God. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Because of who he is, man. Like, I, like I, I totally agree with what you're saying, by the way. Um, but those people that you are referring to, and sometimes us. Yeah, for right? sure. Because sometimes yeah. we, we even use words to manipulate people. <laughs> 
you know, to do the things that we want them to do. Yeah. You, you think about a marriage, you think about a relationship, a lot of it is manipulation. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, I, I heard someone said that, you know, um, they, they can unconditionally love their spouse or their kids. Good. More power to you. More power to you. The only unconditional love that I truly believe that's unconditional is the love of, of, of God. Right. To send his only son to die on the cross for our sins. That's unconditional. Right. But us human, we have conditions and sometimes our conditions are deceptive. You know, like we don't we don't really mention what we really want. Right. It's in the back of our mind, but we'll manipulate the situation to work on our favors. Um, and that that's bad. And especially in relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I cannot read your mind. It's best for you to speak to me about what is it that you want. What is your attention? Your true attention, by the way. I'm not talking about the hidden agendas. Your yeah. true attention. Like, what is your attention? Like, why am I here? Why are you here? And what are you trying to get out of it? Right. And what do you want out of me? Mm -hmm. And I think if we have those and, and that can be spilled out to the churches as well, because if we have those um, open forum conversations, right, where I get to tell you how I feel. Right. And not being picked on by, oh, you said this or you said that, you know, like, you know, picking up words, mm -hmm. then we might get somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it's with every relationship. If that's not the case, then you have to use manipulation. Right. To keep somebody here, to keep a spouse here, to keep a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, to keep, you know, members. You have to use manipulation because there's no open communication. I, I just thought about something. I have a question. So when they speak about when the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue, are they speaking about self like me or let's see if Evie was speaking life and death unto me. I believe it's both. Me too. Because the Bible says that we have the power to curse and bless. Yeah. We, we, like, because, and that's that's in the tongue. Because I don't think... Well, to me, if Evie was speaking death upon me, of course, you know, I'm going to rebuke it, whatever. But I don't think I'm going to sit there. I don't think her saying that has an effect on me more than if I'm saying it to myself. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I okay. I I agree with that, but I feel like from other people, like okay, I don't want to say from other people who holds more power, but I feel like with other, like if someone else says something to you, it kind of it'll affect you more because we want to be validated. Yeah, because it's like if validation. I like if I get dressed and I look in the mirror and I like oh I don't like my outfit, it's okay. But if you were like I don't like that outfit, I would be like dang I thought I put it on, you know. And, like, I feel like with other people, like, you'll tend to notice how much people say to you versus yourself. You know, like, throughout the day, you'll probably, like, degrade yourself 10 times. You're not going to notice that, but you're going to notice the one time someone else said it. Yeah. Especially you know? if you value that person's opinion. Mm -hmm. Right? Which we have people that we value their opinion. Their opinion means a lot to us, right? Yeah. And when they say something that is out of bounds, negative to us, like we, we, we believe it. We believe it. You trust your parents, right? To want the best for you. So a parent that tells you, you will never amount to anything that, that hurts more than a stranger. Right. Absolutely. And you trust your partner to be honest with you. So a partner that tells you, you know, that yo, like you, you, you nothing, you're worthless. That will weigh more on you than a stranger saying it to you. So it's because of the expectation that we have from other people that we get disappointed and we get, you know, sucked into, you know, this deep depression uh, over words that people speak over us. I mean, I feel like it goes as far, I feel like it's still, you know, according to the word, I feel like it's just as equal. You know, there is power. And when you speak things towards yourself and even when somebody speaks things towards you, I feel like if anything, like. In the Bible, I feel like it's pretty much the same, you know, how how significant it is on how you speak to people, how how it is when you communicate, you know, because if, if we take, like I said, if we take this verse literally, then that means communication, how I communicate to you can pretty much dictate your life. Mm -hmm. How I communicate to you can literally put your life in my hands, mm -hmm. you know, so when if we if we take it that way. You know, that's why, that's why I go back to saying, you know, we, 
putting God in his rightful place, putting the word in the rightful place that it, it is, you know, there is power when I speak to you. So when I'm speaking to you, it's like, for real, for real, bro, like, I can literally, I could be the main, I could be the person, I could literally be the culprit right now the culprit. to make you go kill yourself by tomorrow. <laughs> like, to be very honest, like, but somebody can talk to somebody, yeah, and you can true. literally be the culprit, Vic, Vic, like, go you make somebody the kill reason. themselves yeah. the next day. If Vic not, facts. as soon as you end this conversation. Because that's, it, it really, communication speaks. If that's how we understand, if that's how, the communication is how we know God. It's, it's how we know each other. It's how we get people to even know who Christ is. If that's how significant communication is, then we ought to be very, very attentive to how we speak. You know, don't get me wrong. I love me jokes. I love joking around. I'm one goofy kid. But it's like the more, the more you start to let, what's the word I'm looking for? More so that self-fulfillment or like ah, it's just humor self-affirmation yeah you know like that 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 go on then anything will pretty much it pretty much will sound like a good idea because it, it's like ah, oh, it's just making me laugh right now or it's just making me have a good day right now but it's like how are you communicating to this person you know how are you communicating to the to the person whether you know them or not whether y'all been brothers and sisters for like birth or whatever, at the end of the day, it's like, how do I communicate with you? How can I, not only the way I can be the person to make you go kill yourself tomorrow, but how can I make make you the person to go tomorrow and literally read your Bible? How can I make you go pray tomorrow? Or how can I make you, you know, know who God is for real, for real tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know? How how can I identify, you know, the the like, the significance of how important it is for you to have your own relationship with God, you know? So it's like, if communication, like I said, verse, if we take it very literal, then we ought to be very attentive to how we speak to people, man. Because you can literally, you got power. You literally yeah. have power I mean, when you speak. That's, I mean, that's exactly what the Bible I mean, is saying. Because it's like, I feel like, I don't know how we think being negative is the best thing. Because everybody want to be a, you know, comedian. Everybody want to throw jokes. But it's like, the Bible talk about how powerful whatever you're saying to somebody is. Because you cannot take words back. You can say sorry But you can't take time. it back. Yeah. You can never take it back. And I think what what Began was saying, because I was thinking about it. I can say something bad to myself and I can look at myself in the mirror. It might take time, but I can look at myself in the mirror and be like, okay, I didn't mean it. Because mm-hmm. I know me. Because I know what I meant. But if somebody else comes to me and says something bad, I don't know your heart. I don't know what you mean by that. You can say sorry a thousand times. I'm like, oh, it's still going to hurt me. Yeah. So it's like, I think we have to go back how the Bible says. You know, you have to, when you're talking to somebody, speak with life and love, kindness. But we forget those, you know, we don't have that in our dictionary. So we need to be kind to others with love. It's a hard practice, man. For sure. Um, um, when Miss Jones was here, it made perfect sense. She said, you know, when you've been wounded, even though the wound is healed, the mm-hmm. scar is still there. Sure. Yeah. So I think about it in that sense. Like sometimes we say things to people and we think an apology is enough, you know, to, it's not. to, to erase the wound. But the scar is still there. That's never going away. So that person will never trust you the way that they used to. Uh, They will never believe in you the way that they used to. And you might cause them to mistrust for someone else. That had nothing to do with the situation. Mm -hmm. Just collateral damage. You you know what I mean? I I think it's it's sad. But praise be to God, right, that he gave us his word. And I'm going back to the Samaritan woman at the well. Right? Because... Like this, this lady down and out, mm-hmm. right? Um, Jesus asked her for water, you know, and, you know, he said to her, like, I could give you water that will never cease, yeah. like a fountain that never cease to give water, right? She said, are you thinking that your water is better than, you know, our ancestors' water that, that, that did grow our crops? 
right? That that gave water to our cattle. Like your water is, is more than that. And I, I, I know at that time she didn't understand what Jesus was saying to her. But that conversation enough is is good for us to learn a lesson from. That Jesus spoke life into this lady, right? If you only drink this water, you will ne never thirst again. That's speaking life to her. Mm -hmm. The depression that she was going through, the life heartaches that she was facing, just literally spoke life into her, literally saved her life. And if we think about it the same way, like we talk about Christ like mine a lot, but a lot of us don't practice Christ like mine. Like we, we are not Christ like minded because we want to get back. It's easy for us to get back. Yeah. It's easy for me to formulate my thoughts so I can hurt you more than you hurt me. Like that's easy. That comes yeah, easy. It is. That's not good. You know what I mean? My response, like the Haitian said, we are supposed to do you not love me. They both, they both butcher. Not fake back. You know your your It'll response is always right here on your lip. Like I don't I don't have a problem responding to you. Like I could turn turn that thing around. Say in the real business. quick. Yeah. I got right? like an eight. I ain't yeah. 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 like nothing. What you said? All right. Okay. <laughs> right. I got a rebuttal for what you said, but when it comes to speaking positivity and even taking what somebody said wrong and 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 respond to them in a positive, it's hard for us to do. It, it is. is. It is. It is. It's, it's really hard. It's hard. But, you know, when the Bible says, you know, like, you know, if somebody, you know, uh, um, if somebody steal from you, I forgot the verse, if somebody, uh, you know, steal from you, then give them more. Like, give them I think I know off your back, back, you know. Oh, like, I think in the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I think like, I bro, you, you took something from me, but I'm going to give you more. Yeah. But if you think about it, Like you taking joy from me, but I'm gonna give you more. Mm -hmm. You taking my peace, but I'm gonna give you more. You know, you taking my joy away, but I'm gonna give you more. Man, like it does not take a a, a regular person to do that. It doesn't. It it yeah. takes somebody with the like, Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's like you know recognizing that you know when the Bible says you know the Lord is like that well that never runs dry you yeah. know he's that living water you know that living word meaning that there is an endless source so it's like even when somebody steals from something for some reason I never lacked it when you took it when you took it I never knew it was gone because in if if God was the source of it then to be quite honest it was never gone no matter yeah. how much you took from it so when I think of that verse of like you know giving to people that takes from you it's like you're not giving to people what's what you have because what you have is limited but you're giving to you're giving to them what god is you know because he's unlimited so yeah understanding god is literally that never running dry source that unlimited source once you recognize that i feel like it's it's hard i mean it's like it'll be hard for you to To, to worry about things, you know, when things are not in the, when things are not going the way it's supposed to be going or when people speaking to you in ways that you don't really like, because in a way somebody could tell you a lot of things, but the Bible, the Lord tells me a lot of promises. The Lord tells me, you know, Hey man, regardless of what you said, I'm still first, regardless of what you said, the Lord is still going to provide for me, regardless of what you said, regardless if the car broke down right now. I still got a way. Yeah. I still have a way. So, hey, man, you know, God is really good. So we got to really take into account and understand how good he is. Can I backtrack real quick? Go ahead. Okay. I forgot who said it. Somebody said something about, you know, whatever you say to somebody could either make or break somebody, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think, I don't want to sound insensitive. It's, <laughs> do you know that, that comes with um, lack of self-love? For example, if Evie comes up to me one day and be like, your lips is big. My response is going to be, my lips been big for 30, 30 years. I know that. <laughs> I'm, okay, I love it. I love my lips. Another person, oh my God. <laughs> She said, my lips are big. I'm going to kill myself. Do you think that comes with not loving yourself? No. I feel you like don't know the trauma that person had to go through yeah. growing up. Because a lot of that has to do with how they feel. They see themselves. 
So low self esteem. No. Yes, I, yes, it can be low self esteem. It, yeah. it can, but yeah. I think it's not as it's not as surface level as that. I feel like like yeah. in that exact like situation, you know, it can go deeper. Like there could be a whole bunch, a whole host of things that could bring up negative feelings about like a comment like that. You know. Okay, so I don't me, think that's you. You're not comfortable in your skin. You don't really nah, love yourself. but that's you though. I mean. I mean, you again, can't, you, can't, um, you can't want everybody to no, be No, but like I understand you if I wake mom. up one morning and my lips were big, of course I'm going to be, I'm not going to be self-conscious, you know, I'm going to be depressed about it, like, oh my God. For example, like, wait, if I was small, if you were small, if I was small, <laughs> you know, things happen and got me to be big, of course, okay, like, stuff like, wait. Okay, but to me, I'm, I'm going to be like, my answer going to be, okay, I'm working on it. I'm at the gym. You know, getting better. That's because I love myself. I'm confident in myself. But you don't have the weight on yet. So, wait till they get there. Wait till they get there. Wait till they get there. And then, then, and then, then so we're going we're gonna to table this. <laughs> we're going to table this. Like, but, I mean, I was gonna, with the weight um thing, I was going to say, because... Like for for example, for you might go to gym and it's working, but somebody else is probably doing the same thing, waking they up at five in the, the morning. Last Thirty years trying, and trying, but it's not working for them. They trying, and then you just come in and be like, "You're big, bro." Like I've been maybe trying they have for a medical effort. issue. Yeah, you, you, you know don't what know that. I mean. I mean, I think life is just life is too subjective to to think that there's some objective way to get out of things or to right. just deal with things. It's like, bro, like. What can take somebody, you know, like for feeling somebody to feel insecure, you know, it can probably take trauma or it could probably take, you know, their, I, you know, a low self-esteem or it could take what, low bully, self-esteem. It can take a lot of things. Bully, what, what, yeah, whatever. but it, it's a lot it's of a lot. things that play, play into, you know, making you feel a certain way. So when there's so many ways to feel a certain way, then I feel like there are so many ways to even get out of it. And if anything, when it when it when you see that there is so many ways to get out of it, then that means the length and the time of it is also subjective as well. Mm-hmm. It's different, you know. What can cause somebody to actually love themselves by next week? It'll take them thirty years to love themselves, or because when we think about the walk of Christ, you know, not everybody becomes. It's not like oh, by fifteen you should be able to get baptized, and then by twenty your life should be right. You sh- you should be right with God to the point where you could die for Him. It's it's different for you don't everybody. Know. Yeah. It is you different. Really don't know. It is. It is. So it's like when life is too subjective, there's there's not a objective way to be like, huh? Okay, like you should love yourself by thirty, or you yeah. have low self esteem. You're too old for that. Like that's that's. I mean, we shouldn't. It's too subjective. We shouldn't focus on that though, because if if so, if you know somebody have low self esteem, or if you know somebody don't love themselves or have any issue, I think. As a Christian or as a human being, you should be here to help the person. Because like if you go in the Bible, if I feel down and I go in the Bible and I'm going to read, God going to tell me that I am wonderful, you know, and beautifully made. Beautifully. And, you know, that means mm-hmm. he's encouraging me to keep going. You should do the same way if you want to be Christ-like. Yeah. Don't nobody read that verse and man. Oh, yeah, I believe it now. Never doubt it again. <laughs> Don't nobody ever do that. But the thing is, you can still go back to the Bible and you're going to find you need that reminder. Yeah. Exactly. negativity. So we shouldn't focus on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have, I have two things. One, I think like we're, we're trying to find like examples, like real world examples of how to put this. And I think the easiest one, so, so just how powerful the tongue is and what you say is would be prayer. You know, like you wake up every day, you go to sleep and you know, you talk to God and you say, this is what I did today or whatever, whatever. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to like aspire like to do. And you're putting that out speaking life you're speaking okay. life you know yeah. like when you ask god hey well not hey but you know you're like god hey man <laughs> hey, tell me what's up yeah. Yeah. you better tell right. you better, you better <laughs> talk to god like yeah. in your most comfortable <laughs> hey big as me hey big dog is the comfortable yeah. way you talk to me, man. Hey, <laughs> did i tell you the story like one time me and my um my homies like we're we're at the church and it was a a, a saturday and we decided to pray all right we had a prayer so we had one of our, you know, homeboy, we call him Big Cheese. So we asked Big Cheese to pray. And Big Cheese was like, hey, yo, God. And everybody started laughing, right? I mean, and we like, though. man, lock it up, bro. 
Lock it up. Because that's how homie prays to God. Like, you know, that's how he... Yeah. He feel comfortable with God to, to be like, yo, you know, and yo, God, you know, it's me, your boy, Big Cheese. <laughs> like, yeah, man, let him do that, man. Like, you should approach God, like, the most respectful way possible. Yes. Of course. But, but be you. Be comfortable. Because he yeah. knows you better yeah. than you know yourself. So yeah. be you with God, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be with God. And the verse I was looking for, I'm so sorry. You got that. <laughs> <The verse, laughs> I found the verse. <laughs> I found the verse. It's Luke 6, verse 29. It says, if anybody hits you on your cheek, offer the other one. Um, <laughs> if anybody take your coat, let them have the shirt off your back. Mm-hmm. That's tough to do. Yeah, it is. That, that's tough to do. That means that I have to keep giving you no matter what you do to me. No matter how much you hurt me, I have to give you more. That's love. And that's tough to do. That is the mind of Christ. Like, like you know, like like we we they give them... Uh, lashes, you know what I mean? Like, he's, he, I'm gonna keep going, right? I'm gonna give them my blood. And, and they pierce his side. He said, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna die on this cross, right? They killed him. He said, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna resurrect. Like, Christ never stopped giving, you know, for us. And if, like I said, man, like the mind of Christ, man, I, I can't speak on that enough, man. I think the way that we become better people, is to have the Christ-like mind. That's how we become better people. If we are relying on our knowledge, we're relying on our education, uh, our background, our social status, uh, relying on our money to be better people, we will never be, never. ever reach that level of being better people. Yeah. Right? But if we have that Christ-like mind, everything else does not matter. I'm not saying you're going to do the right thing all the time. Yeah. I'm not saying that because we're still human. We're going to make mistakes. But you will be quick to listen and slow to speak. Uh, you will be angry, but you will not sin because you will know that when you're angry, you're not going to speak. Yeah. Um, and those are things that we can practice in our daily lives. And that could change the way that we, you know, friendship, the way that we fellowship. Um, yeah, I, I like the, the, the insight that you gave on the church, man. I think, um, I hope the churches are listening, man, because, yeah, it's going to be one long episode. It, it is. <laughs> we got to cut it. 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 I am, I am so glad that I was able to read this and get something out of it. Tony Evans. Tony Evans big is one of the most profound preaches of my generation. That's big, dog. Right? Uh, Tony Evans. 94.9. Bro, what? what? I think it lit. He goes hard. Uh, and the lit. man knows his word. You know, he keeps it kingdom. You know, I think uh, his ministry is kingdom driven. Uh, I'm not sure what the um, the true name of the ministry, but I know it's like kingdom related. Mm-hmm. You know, and everything that he does. Like, I had his Bible, um, you know, and... Tony Evans recently stepped down from his church and nobody knows the true reason because he has not said himself. People are speculating, yeah. right? But it's so honorable, you know, it for is. a man it of is. God to recognize that, you know, hey, I have sinned, you know, uh, a woman of God to understand that, hey, I have sinned. And I'm not telling you to step off your your, 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 your church. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But, you know, as friendships, you know, as relationships, when you know you did something wrong, recognize it right step off i would put it like this step up your step off your 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 high stool right and humble yourself and apologize to someone you know reach out to someone you know say i'm sorry it's so hard for us to say it i'm i'm sorry you know christianity i feel like if we really believe the true essence of it it forces you to be humble because the highest you could go is at the lord's feet yeah. So if that's the whole lot, if that's that again, that's a clip. The highest you can ever go is at the Lord's feet. So if that's the highest if you could ever go, bruh, you have no choice but to be humble. Yeah. And even when Jesus was down here, he himself, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, was washing my feet. <laughs> he was washing my feet, yeah. washing the disciples' feet. And if you think you could be higher than that. 
I ain't gonna lie. Like to keep it a buck, you gotta go reevaluate your faith. You gotta go reevaluate your faith, man. Self righteousness. Go back in that book, man. Go yeah. back and find God, please. Please. But, um, as we started the podcast, we even I even I even forgot to introduce y'all, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's all good though. The people they, already know. They already know their favorite host. They know who we are. Yeah, they yeah. know me, your favorite host. They know um, Evie. They know Evie. <laughs> you know Davi. You know Big M over there, not the little one. Um, and C Breezy. Yeah, but this is this <laughs> was a quick take, man, on the power of the tongue. Yes. yes and uh, we just need to be careful about what we say, man, and how we say it, because um, it do, it does affect somebody's life. One way or another, someone even, can die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not like literally. Yeah, you know. So be careful about what you say and how you say it. Yeah. Uh, any final message to the world? Be kind. Last final message as of like ten. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> for, this episode. for this episode, this episode, any final message on you know the power of the tongue? Um, just what Evie said. You know, be kind, speak life, speak blessing onto your friends, onto your family, to yourself. Yeah. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. That means she even want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that means. Um, I'm trying to leave with a deep word. Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> Y'all go. Let me think real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me think real quick. If you go, bro, I gotta. Think. I already said it. <laughs> say it Very again. short. I said, be kind. Mm. I say. Nah, I can't make it deep. <laughs> I'm struggling. Um, I say, re- just read your Bible, man. Hey, man. Just, just believe that. Believe who God says He is, man. If you believe that, then believe how important it is communication, because salvation is in it. So yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, with that being said, the uh, tongue is powerful. It could literally speak life to someone or death. Uh, it could build. It could destroy. Come on and like, subscribe, comment, and comment down below. Yes. Uh, we can't wait to hear from you guys. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, until next time, it's your boy Faith of Sam chilling with the crew. Let's tap to tap to tap. Tap, tap in. in.